in the workshop, fitting a mechanical lubricator to a Stuart 5A steam engine. This is part one. The valve timing is a bit out, but I'm not worried about that for the moment because I'm fitting a mechanical lubricator. And here, still in its plastic bag, is the mechanical lubricator that I bought from Blackgates Engineering a few weeks ago. I need to make a mounting bracket for it, and when I fit mechanical lubricators to Stuart 5As, I do them like this. For the mounting plate, I'm using a 3mm piece of brass sheet. Over now to the bandsaw to cut the piece of brass sheet to the correct size. In a previous clip, I've just shown me marking around the shape of the lubricator, but when I'm cutting the brass, it's a little bit wider than that. It's very important to make sure that the actuating arm on the lubricator is in alignment with the centre of the eccentric strap. You'll see why as the video develops. The reason that I make the lubricator mounting the way I do is simple. I don't have to drill any more holes in the main fabric of the 5A. All I need to do is remove this one bolt, make the bracket and then replace the bolt in the hole holding the bracket in position. In this clip I'm using a very sharp knife blade to scrape off the paint. And now it looks like this. The hole that I drill in the brass mounting bracket needs to be exactly the right size and in exactly the right position. The bracket cannot move because it's pressed firmly up against the standard of the engine itself. In this video you will frequently see me using the lubricator upside down like this, using it as a template to allow me to scribe lines on the brass mounting bracket. In this clip I've coated part of the underside of the bracket with engineer's blue. Then I held it in the correct position so I could mark it out to drill the hole for the bolt, but first of all I need to see what the diameter of the bolt is. My calibrated eye told me that this was a quarter of an inch diameter bolt and the micrometer verifies this. I think my drill chuck is having a very bad day today, I'm definitely going to change this chuck, it's absolutely rubbish. But for now I'm working with it and I drill the hole in the correct position, as you can see when I put the bolt in place and sit the lubricator on the end of it, everything's very secure. I've used a felt tip pen to make a mark and I'm going to cut off this sharp edge. It's always a good idea to avoid sharp edges where possible to avoid personal injury and now as you can see it's rounded off and it's a lot safer. I'm also going to round off the corner that's diagonally opposite to this one but not until I've marked out the position for the pump accurately. I've just noticed that this is a 12mm socket. I don't think the bolt is metric, I think it's imperial, but even though the socket is metric, it still tightens the bolt fine. Once again, using the lubricator upside down as a template, I'm marking its position on the bracket. When I cut the brass mounting plate, I made sure it was perfectly square, and as I mark the position of the lubricator on the bracket, I'm making sure that that's square also. In this clip you can see that I've now rounded the other edge of the bracket and I'm removing it for the next part of the job. These mechanical lubricators have a one-way valve in the form of an elbow which delivers the oil to the cylinder. I need to remove this part temporarily. I will refit this non-return valve to the lubricator once I've drilled a hole in the bracket. In this clip I've drilled the hole and it fits perfectly over the washer. And here I've refitted the one-way valve elbow and everything's lining up very well. It must be beginner's luck, because my marking out is definitely suspect sometimes. I scratch away on pieces of metal, but at least I know where I need to drill the hole. I got this right in the first attempt, but if you're doing a job like this and you make a mess of the bracket, just make another one. And nothing's really wasted, apart from the piece of brass, because by repeating the process, you get better at it but not according to a girlfriend that I once had. Now I need to very carefully drill some holes in the pump itself. It will not be good if I drill these holes in the wrong place, so I'm being very careful with the marking out. I drilled and deburred two holes in the pump tank, and here I'm holding the pump on the bracket and transferring the hole positions to the bracket itself, and you can clearly see this on the marking out blue. Initially I drilled the holes in the pump tank one eighth of an inch diameter. Then I drilled two holes in the base exactly through the centre of these marks, once again using the same one eighth of an inch diameter drill. And you've just been watching me threading the holes with a 4BA tap. After I'd enlarged the holes in the tank, I opened those up to 964 of an inch in diameter, got rid of all the swarf, deburred them once again, and here I'm just applying some oil. 
All I'm doing at the moment is testing that the mechanical principle of the pump works fine. These ratchet type pumps have been around for a long time and the one on my 7.25 inch gauge locomotive has never given me any trouble at all, it just lubricates the cylinders. But I did notice that a few years ago the quality of them went downhill. But now whoever manufactures these makes a really good job of it. And the quality has returned to how it used to be. Even though I checked the alignment of the eccentric strap with the actuating arm of the mechanical lubricator, here now it's all together, I'm checking it again. And the good news is, everything is still in alignment. The next part of the operation is to silver solder an extension onto the lower part of the eccentric strap. I'm marking the position with a felt tip pen so I know which way round the strap goes. I don't want to fit the extension to the wrong side but I needn't have bothered because the pair numbers are already stamped on the other side of the eccentric strap. And now in the outer part of the workshop it's silver soldering time. I've shown this process quite a lot so I've speeded it up, you get the principle. Wait until the flux takes on a watery appearance, apply the silver solder, then the part moves so you have to move it back into position while still applying the heat. Once the part is in position perfectly, let it cool to black and quench it in water. Then still in the outer part of the workshop, it's time to remove the lid from the acid bath, then suspend the newly silver soldered part in the acid to clean off the flux residue and the oxidisation. And here it is, here's the part going into the acid bath. So later today, or probably tomorrow, the part will be nice and clean. And that's it for this episode, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.